Tá. Hello. And welcome back to Thank God I Don't Look Like What I've Been Through. This is a podcast where we enter in a safe space. We give testimonials and we fellowship and we also praise God for his goodness. Today I'm here with my special guest, Manisha Purnell, and we're going to title today's podcast, Count It All Joy. Manisha, how are you today? I'm great. Blessed. Blessed to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Tell us a about yourself? Well, I'm 40. I'm um, from, originally from Chicago. I'm in Hammond, Indiana right now. Um, I have four beautiful daughters, ages 18, 15, 13, and five. Um, let's see what else. I'm in the field of social work uh, for a company called Mental Health America. Um, so I go to uh, mom's homes, check on them, make sure they get what they're supposed to get, their resources, mental health in check, make sure they uh, just handle stress um, in a good way. Um, Help them mm -hmm. to be better for the children. That's wonderful. Praise God. It takes a special kind of person to work with people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. I did eight years in a residential home. Wow. With people with different mental illnesses, um, with that, and I truly enjoyed it. It's it's rewarding, but it takes a special person to be able to to um work with people with disabilities and mental illness. Yes. So thank you for being that person because we need more people like you. Yes, I love it. my job. I love it. Praise God. Though, Manisha, I thought of you, the spirit led me to you mm -hmm. when I thought of my next episode's title, Count It All Joy. I personally have known you for quite some time. Long time. The people that's listening, your brother has children by one of my cousins. Yes. And, um, I actually used to do your hair when you were a young woman coming up before you even became a mom. Yes, yes. I'm acquainted <laughs> with you and your family and we go back. So I, I, the spirit led me to you to see if you would like to give your testimony because I know you not only outside of being a, just a special person, mm -hmm. I think you're awesome, but yeah. You, you are too. I, I know, I know some things about you, and I just felt like you could help some people, especially with the, you know, the times we living in. That's what this podcast is about: okay. encouraging other people, you know, and giving people the strength to come out and tell their stories in the hopes of helping other people that may be going through something similar. Right. Right. So. Would you be willing to share some of your testimony with us today? Yes, yes, of course. So um, about 17 years ago, um, I lost uh, one of my children's dad, my oldest. Uh, he mm -hmm. was in a car accident. It was 2007 um, in May, actually May 22nd. So a few few days ago, uh, 17 years. My he, Yes, my daughter, my oldest daughter, she was maybe 18 months when it happened, so she doesn't remember him at all. But yeah, he was killed in a car crash. He was, it was all in the newspaper. It was on TV. It was a major crash. It was uh, on the south side of Chicago. He was running from the police, and um, he, would, he killed two people, crashed into them, and then um, he was ejected from the car and, and passed. And um, back then, I was a young mom, first time, you know, um, we was dating for about six, seven years. How old were you when you had your daughter and, well, at the time of his, his, his timely his, passing? I was maybe about 22 or 23. Okay, still very young. Yes, very young. So um, that happened. And, you know, before then, he was incarcerated. So we, 
my daughter and couldn't bond with him. But the time he was out, he was out for maybe four or five months prior to his death. So I tried to, you know, get him to have that relationship with her. He tried, you know, he was um, out in the streets. Um, but the time he did spend with her, that would take he would take her out, take her to the park, teach her little things, bond with her, uh, feed her anything she wanted. And I was kind of mad about that. But he bonded with her before he passed. Um, and during that time, you know, it, it just it was a big shock. It was like, you know, hey, you know, this. My first time being a mom, he died. I didn't. I felt alone. I didn't have the other side, you know. And then my baby growing up. Hey, where's my dad? You mm -hmm. know, she seen him on pictures. Uh, she wanted to know more about his family. Um, his mom passed prior to. He didn't know much about his dad's side, so I couldn't connect to that side of family. But my my baby always asked questions. Of course, when uh, the funeral came, she could talk a little bit. So she kept saying, my dad's sleep, my dad's sleep. And I'm saying, mm. yes, he's resting, he's resting. And uh, it was a veil over his casket because his face was kind of damaged from the accident. So the baby really couldn't tell, but she kept saying her dad was asleep. But yeah. So that happened um, when I was 24. Um, I started dating a few years later. Um, uh, my two daughters, my two middle daughters, their dad. Um, and we actually met in harvey illinois where he was okay. from. okay yeah and um so we dated for about i want to say six years and it was crazy he kept saying he wasn't gonna live long it was like he seen it the second one and i kept saying i'm saying you know i've been through this before with the oldest one you know he knew about you know my prior relationship and what happened and he kept he saying he, said, I'm he wasn't gonna live long yes he, he told know, me, power in the tongue too. Yeah, he he said he would have dreams about someone shooting him, and I would oh. ask him like, you know, what kind of dreams? What what was going on? And I prayed for him. We prayed together. Um, but long story short, so we split right before his passing a few months, and he went to stay with his mom. Um, and it was on Memorial Day actually, and this mm. was it'll be eleven years tomorrow. 11 years for his passing. So both passings were in May. Um, but yeah. Memorial Day. Wow, could that coincidental? Yeah, it's crazy. So that happened Memorial Day. He, um, he was shot. The story that I heard was some young man ran up on in the house that he was in. He was playing cards with a couple of individuals. As young boys ran in on him and they tried to rob him. A fight, in, you know, broke out and he was killed. He was shot about four, I believe four to five times. Um, and um, I didn't, I got a call from his niece saying he was shot, but they said he was okay. I don't know where this came from. So I kept trying to call her, like, is he okay? Is he okay? Um, um, so, give me pause. Thank you, Pam. So I kept. Um, uh, so no, she called that night and stated like he was okay. He was shot in the arm. So I kept calling her, trying to figure out what's going on. And she wouldn't answer. So the next day, I get a call from his mom said that he was killed. So I said, "What?" I instantly dropped the phone. And, um, you know, I just lost it. My kids were in the bed with me and they were I kept, got again. Yeah, they kept asking mommy, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I just couldn't bring it to tell them that their dad is, is deceased. So we went to the mom's home and, you know, we sat around and talked about what happened and the kids were playing and his kids were four and two. So they were pretty young too. So they, uh, the four-year-old stated that she remembered uh, some some things about her dad, but the two-year-old did not have any memory. Um, also, my oldest, you know, it affected her twice. You know, she double, double. She took him on as her stepdad. So for her to it's go like through, losing two dad. Mm -hmm. So for her, I really watched her. So we went to counseling around that time, and what's crazy, what helped me 
because I, I was gonna lose it. I, I felt my body just just not being here. My my mind was everywhere. And uh the what what helped me uh was I was in college for humans human services and we were on the 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 book we we were studying grief how to process grief how it how it you know it comes as a shock how the next stage is like um anger Anger. yeah there's so many stages to grief so that's what helped me is learning about grief and how to process not only that um i've been you know god has been always in the background i've been raised in a church i'm in church now i go to um Christian Covenant Church it's on a, uh, in Roseland, 200 West, 115th Street, uh, under the leadership of Pastor uh, Harris, Johnny Harris. So I've been there for about 10 years, but I've always had God in my background. I always prayed, I always, you know, I knew about the Bible. My mom, you know, had us in the church all the time and God is our strength. So what helped me is that and then just praying, praying right then and there. When it happened, I started praying and then I, I broke down and it just felt like I, I was just, I wasn't here. And something told me, say, Nisha, you have to hold it together. You have to hold it together. You got four, three kids, three girls. They need you right now. They need your strength. And I had to, I had to be strong. And, and like I said, God is my strength. He's always been in my background and I prayed. And what what led me through even now is prayer and going to counseling. I had to go to counseling with the girls at the young age. They taught them how to process grief, taught them, taught them how to, you know, um, talk to God because we did, you know, say that we're Christians and they um, told us about connecting to spirituality through counseling. Um, What else? And then just, just, always taking them out to places, keeping them encouraged, keeping them positive in positive um, atmospheres. Um, I also take them to the cemetery. I know my oldest, her dad doesn't have a um, tombstone. So we always have to really kind of try to find him. Uh, The youngest, the middle two, uh, we know where he's buried. Um, So they go, they talk to their dad, like as if he was here, they cry, they share tears. They even write um, letters to their dad. So it's pretty, pretty neat when they go to the cemetery. But that's just awesome that you have been able to help them Mm -hmm. and through therapy and God Mm -hmm. and all that. But tell me, how have you yourself been able to really navigate young mom in college, first time baby, lose your love, mm-hmm. have to go on, raise the baby, then you find love again, and you have two more beautiful children again. Right. And this happens to you again. And you able to just keep pushing. What do you tell the the young mother that has lost her child's father and don't have no real support and don't really know where to go or what to do or is thinking about maybe leaving the baby on a family member because maybe they could do it better in, in that person's mind or heart right a spirit or what would you tell that that young mom that is going through something like this that is thinking about taking a baby to foster care because they just don't think they have the strength to to navigate it what would you tell I would someone, or not even just a mom, right? Because we have single fathers out here. Just today, yeah. Um, a, a, a acquaintance, someone I knew, passed away on 63rd in Cottage Grove in a no. in an act in an accident, and she was a mom, and no. and it was her daughter's gender reveal yesterday. She was leaving there, and um, was struck and and 
the DOA. And now all her little children's fathers have to pick up the piece because she has small children. God. So mm -hmm. I just pray for her family mm -hmm. as well. You know, so what do you tell the the, 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 the young mother or mm -hmm. the young father that's left with the child, with the parent alone? I have to, you have to first build your support system. A lot of people really don't have support systems. No, even, they don't. Yeah, even in the field that I'm in now, our focus is to uh, build their support system. If they don't have the support, we build one for them. So reach out to, um, if you can't reach out to family members, reach out to the community. They have, um, you know, of course, mental health services, of course, churches. Um, if you're not familiar with God, you know, get familiar with any, you know, what your belief is or, you know, even doctors, they can point you in certain support groups. You know, they have a lot of support groups online that uh, have many people that experienced this before. So people you can talk to, people you can get to know. Um, and not only that, I, I like to journal. Journal your thoughts down. Um, uh, you know, um, kind of process. And when you get it out of you, down on paper, even out, speak aloud. Um, it feels a little bit better. It feels a little bit better. But find your support system. Other than that, I would say pray and continue to just um, trust God. Trust God, definitely trust God. You have it's a process, and a lot of people don't know how grief works. Grief can sneak up on you anywhere, anytime, any day. There's no um, time limit on it. No, no time limit. You can't you think you should be done grieving your loved ones at a certain amount of time, right? And it and it, it just doesn't work that way mm -mm. and counseling helps you to process it they even have christian-based counseling right so, you know and that i believe that's the best especially for me we didn't go to one but i believe those are the best because it it tells you how god uh works with with, with uh healing with and grief. not the lean on your own mm -hmm. understanding and the, yes. to trust them in these things yes how did you how did you um excuse me mm -hmm. was there any time when you was going through this did you ever feel like like bad luck? luck yeah yeah why me and my mom said, you know, you don't question God. I did. I'm not. And I asked for his forgiveness. But I used why to always why? say, why? Yeah, you know, why me? Am I bad luck? Am I meant to? Is it going to happen? Even my relationship now, I have a fear and um, that, hey, you know, I'm thinking, you know, what if something happens to him? You know, what would I do? Oh, yeah. So oh, it, it, I, I struggle with that right now. And what keeps me going is just praying and believing positive thoughts. Just always, you know, hey, you know, that happened, but that's, you know. It's a part of mm -hmm. something I've been through, mm -hmm. but it don't have to be the, what defines you as right. a mother and a woman. Mm -hmm. And um, you just can't have those negative thoughts in your mind because God controls everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, he you is know. in control. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm not thinking that, you know, it's 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 a lot of people that go get they may go through this and I can't just say why me and um and I believe, you know, like you said, my testimony can help others. So I want people to know that you can get through it. You have to believe that you can get through it. You have to know that you know your strength is there. If you need help, go, go ask for it. If you can't handle it alone. Like you said, if they need to go take them to another family member, go, go, you know, I don't want you to lose it. And something happens to your baby or your, you know, your family. Um, we don't want you to feel like you're alone because God is always there. He's there. Oh, oh, he will never leave or forsake us. That's correct. He said that in his word. Yes. And we have to hold on to his word. Right. You have to believe. He doesn't return void. 
and we have to trust him in his process. Right. And thank God that you don't look like what you've been through. And thank God that you understood right. that your children were a blessing. Mm -hmm. They are. You can count it all joy looking back, even mm -hmm. though it hurted you going through, and sometimes it still hurts. Right. But and I know you personally, and I see how you parent your girls. And um, I want to congratulate you because you just you. actually um, recognized at your youngest daughter's school. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even know they were going to do that. No, it was so, such, it's, it was such know, a you, shock because I've been going through a little depression of just, you know, hey, what's my purpose? Or I'm, I'm mm -hmm. older now. What, what can I do? I'm helping others, but I don't feel like I'm doing enough. And that God said, hey, here it is. You are help. You are helping others. You are yeah, special. And didn't even. Yeah. But <laughs> and you know that even I saw you, you know. Yeah. So you are seen. Yeah. You are heard and you are loved and cared for. Thank and you need to know that. Mm -hmm. And I just thank you for coming on. And I, I know that your testimony will touch someone. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping that our listeners will share this with someone. Mm -hmm. It's so sad to say that right. what you went through is something that almost happened in every day. Yeah. But the fact that you went through it twice right. and was able to be strong, but that's because you knew where your strength, mm -hmm. your source of your strength comes from. That's what this podcast is all about. We have to testify about the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And we have to encourage each other in hopes of encouraging someone else in the Lord. This walk that we take with the Lord is the most important walk of our life. People yeah. will leave us, but the Lord will always be there for us. He's going to take us through these times. Yes. You know, we have to we have to praise him and give him all the glory mm -hmm. that he deserves for keeping us. And we have to stand on us. Mm -hmm. and we and have to recognize that our children are blessings. Children, you know, they are totally gifts from God. Yes. And truly, I believe me, I could see my first son in 41. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> I trust I know that it was a gift from God that yes. I was able to have that baby. Oh. I know that you know mm -hmm. your children were ill. Yes. And you are yes. pleased with them. Yes. And I just hope that your testimony helps somebody be strong. Yes. And it. facing something similar in their life. I want to share some scripture that I had um, took out mm -hmm. of this. It comes from James. Okay. It's the first chapter and it's verse three to four. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing Amen. So I just want you to know that your trials made you patient. Mm -hmm. It made you want to help others mm -hmm. and give back. Yes. And it didn't break you. No. And you don't want for nothing because you know who your source is. Mm -hmm. You know who your provider is. So I just wanted to share that with you that your trials may change mm -hmm. and it may do the person that you are yeah. and the person that God called you to be. Mm -hmm. And I, I pray that he give you the strength to keep going on and helping others all your day. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. do everything that you do in Christ. 
mm-hmm. and in love. Yes. yes. And that's what I hope and pray for you. Thank you. Thank so, you. So as we come out and we go to a close, mm-hmm. I just want my listeners to come back next week mm-hmm. where the title is Saved by Grace. Yes. And if you all are listening, want to join me on Sundays for service, you can catch us on Facebook Watch or YouTube or stop by Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 6758 South Wabash Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Our service starts at 12 p.m. And we worship under the leadership of Kevin, Pastor Kevin Will. So check us out online, Facebook. And if you want to come on a podcast and you have a testimonial, reach me, contact me through the podcast or through any of the websites that is associated with the Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church. Or you can reach me through my Facebook I am Sernicio Lamour, the host for this podcast, and I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through, and I get, and I thank God, Manisha, that you don't look like what you've been through, and I thank you for sharing with us today. And before we go, I always ask all my guests, what does peace mean to you? Peace? What does peace mean to me? Yeah. Peace is, it's an inside thing. It's, it's a, um, a sense of, uh, it's a feeling of being, um, just being, um, let me see, I can't even think of the word, but it's, it's, it's a sense of joy. It's a sense of being settled. It's the sense of being, feeling like you're okay, feeling like you got it. It's feeling like, um, hey, you know, no worries, no worries, you know. So, and I know that's the the that's what you get when you you know you pray. You you it's mm. like a burden to lift it. You give it to God. You have to give it to God because man can't handle what God can handle. So, Oof. yeah, you have to give it to God, and that's peace for me. When you pray, you just, just release pray and let let God take. And know that, he, know that he got, know that he in control after you give it to him. Right. And, he and, that, solve it. and that's definitely important. Mm-hmm. So I want you to make sure that you protect your peace. Mm-hmm. The you to guard your heart and protect your peace. Okay. So that you can keep moving forward in your calling, helping yeah. younger women and families in need and being a great mom to them beautiful girls. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and thank you. And before I end, officially, we're gonna close out and we're gonna pray. Okay. Is this all right, you like to pray with me? Yes, I will. <laughs> so we're gonna pray. Thank you, Father, right now. We just thank you for being God and God all by yourself, Father God. We thank you for this podcast. Father God, give us the strength to keep coming forward with our testimonials for your glory, Father God, because we know it is only you that strengthens us, Father God, Mm -hmm. through your son, Jesus Christ, Father God. We thank you for sending your son, Father God, so that he can be our son, the light of the world, our, our strength, our joy, our peace, Father God. We just thank you more and more and more each day for each day, Father God. Bless us, Father God. Continue to keep your hand on us, Father God, so that we can continue to count all things joy, Father God, knowing that you are with us, continuing to create art in our lives, Father God. We just thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for bringing us through. Thank you that we don't look like what we've been through, Father God, because it is you that brought us through, Father God. Mm -hmm. Continue to just walk with us, Father God. And we want to continue to give you all the praise that you deserve, Father God, every day of our lives. Yes. 
We pray because we believe, Father God, and we love you because yeah. you first loved us. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being a God that sit high and look low. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being the keeper of us, Father. And thank you for blessing us just yes. once again right now in this moment. Yes, Lord. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, thank you, Manisha. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. It was a joy. Yes, it was. Thank you. It was really a joy. This so, really helped me, too, because everybody, everybody that come on say that, too, they kind of made them feel better and it helped them. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said you're getting it out. It makes you, it's, it's like a relief, you know, especially during the month of May. I can't, I kind of, you know. And, and who would have knew? Mm -hmm. I never I never could have known that right. so this was you. the month and you was probably feeling away mm -hmm. already. I, the spirit led me to you. All right. And you kept saying that too. So um, only God could have knew it because you know right. I wouldn't have knew that. Right. And it's helped me. So th that's God. It works just like it that. <laughs> but a greater good for those that love him. Yes. Yeah. So I thank you. And I I want my listeners to come back. No. Come back next week. Please. Stay back, Grace. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, tell a friend about thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Again, I am the host. My name is Sernicia Lamour. And I'd like to thank my guest, Manisha Parnell, for sharing her testimony. Very well. God bless you all and have a great week. Thank you again, Manisha. You're very welcome. Thank you.